In the previous video where I took a closer look at the TPS 61088 I did some measurements of the output noise but I also ran the module up to the uh, maximum specified output power of 12 volts to amps. It was to be expected that the losses would turn into heat and just the small size of this board would not be enough to dissipate all the uh, heat safely so the boost chip reached a toasty 150 degrees celsius and inevitably went into thermal protection there were two questions that people uh, mainly left in the comments first people were curious if this module would behave differently if a uh, heatsink was installed and also some people thought about using this module in a fixed uh, output voltage configuration because if you remember there is a chip on this module that will switch the output voltage based on a, uh, a quick charge uh, spec and depending what the load is requesting through that protocol uh, but people might just want a simple fixed output to this I would add a third question of my own what is the real efficiency figure of this module at the maximum output I'm curious what the value is this video is sponsored by jlcpcb.com who recently upgraded their offer so you now get 24 hours turnaround time and you can choose any solder mask color for the same price of just two dollars prototyping is now faster and cheaper so it's definitely worth checking them out so let's start addressing our first question what happens if we add a heatsink to the module well, I have this big box of uh, different size heat sinks and I'm thinking I should find one in here uh, that would go uh, nicely on the back of the PCB. Someone suggested in the comments that he used a small heat sink on uh, uh, top of the chip, uh, but I don't like that idea because the heat sink would have to be very small to uh, clear those uh, big capacitors and inductor and also there is the risk of short circuiting something if you touch one of those uh, capacitor instead i would prefer to add a uh, larger heatsink on the back of the pcb because there is this uh, very large ground plane on the back and there are thermal vias uh, right under the chip so uh, the ground plane should conduct heat quite nicely I've looked through my box of heatsinks and I have found quite a wide uh, selection of heatsinks that could work with this uh, module from small ones up to bigger ones and even one with a cooling fan for example if this is a uh, 12 volt cooling fan uh, you could attach this and connect it right to the output of the module which is 12 volts and it will uh, cool it uh, really really well but it's preferable to have some uh, passive cooling and um, I'm inclined to uh, test this smaller heatsink because I kind of like how it goes on the back of the module and it's exactly the the width of the module almost exactly the same uh, length but I'm curious to see if this will be enough to keep the temperature under control but if not, there are, for example, heat sinks like these ones, which are designed for TO220 packages. And this will also uh, have the right width, so the module fits right in there on the heat sink. So uh, this one uh, will probably provide a bit more cooling than the first one. There are also longer ones. It seems that the any heatsink designed for the TO220 package uh, will kind of fit this uh, module between its uh, rails. There are also these types of heatsinks which are recovered from computer motherboards. You could also use something like this. Um, these ones can be ordered online from the uh, big distributors. And as you can see, this is a very um, large chunk of aluminium this will for sure provide enough cooling for the two and a half watts that this module could be uh, dissipating these ones i believe you'll find on uh, aliexpress uh, as uh, led uh, heat sinks and this one i have already mentioned it's active cooling all of the back on this uh, module is a ground plane but uh, i need to make sure i don't short these uh, two pins which are the uh, input to the module and uh, I can just add a bit of uh, captain tape to cover those before adding the double-sided uh, uh, thermal tape this is a special tape designed especially for attaching stuff to a heatsink it's very thin uh, and it should have good thermal conductivity 
For our test I'm going to be powering the module with 4 volts at the input and I will be sinking uh, 12 volts 2 amps on the output. The ambient temperature is uh, around 29 degrees Celsius and we'll see how the module behaves uh, while running at full load. And after 20 minutes of running at full load the temperature of our chip is just around 116 degrees Celsius. It seems to have stabilized around this value which is an improvement because without a heatsink the chip would have long been toasty at 150 degrees or more. Still this is not a temperature I'm comfortable to run this chip at so I would recommend maybe using a uh, larger heatsink than what I use here maybe double the size of uh, the one I used so that way you will get a uh, lower temperature. And I would like to mention something about this test although I did not actively cool the boost module because of the proximity to the dummy load which was actively being cooled there might have been some drafts of air that helped with cooling of the uh, boost module heatsink. So if I were to place this module inside a sealed enclosure it would probably get an increase in temperature. And also the uh, double sided adhesive tape that I used between the heatsink and the PCB is not ideal. For example when compared to classical thermal paste it doesn't perform as well so if you want the best possible thermal transfer between the board and the heatsink First you need to remove the solder mask because that's increasing our thermal resistance and you should have the uh, PCB copper layer from the bottom side in contact with the heatsink with just thermal paste in between. Next someone asked how uh, it can use this module with a fixed output voltage and well there are two ways you can do that. The first way you need to reverse engineer this PCB and uh, remove the quick charge management chip and add two resistors to form the divider feedback network which is needed to set the output voltage of the boost converter. This is shown in the example schematic in the datasheet of this chip. Or the second way you could do this and it's easier is uh, to purchase another module with a PCB designed exactly that way. Here's a picture of one you can find this on AliExpress and it does not have the quick charge management chip. It uses the uh, resistor divider as a feedback and thus you can change the output voltage by changing those uh, resistors. And you can find the formula for that in the datasheet of the chip. There is one downside though it's uh, this uh, second module is not as popular so the price of this is higher. And the last thing to address in this video is the efficiency of this chip or module. To measure that I'm using these two multimeters to check the uh, voltage and current at the input because we need to know the uh, power at the input as well as the output. We can then calculate the output power divided by input power to find out the efficiency. The difference between the obtained figure up to 100% will of course be turned into heat by this module. So I'm gonna get the output measurements from the dummy load because those are uh, quite accurate measurements and I'm gonna take notes. I'm going to uh, measure with different input voltages so we can plot the efficiency from 3 volts up to let's say 4.4 volts. Here are the results. It was quite difficult to take these uh, measurements mainly because uh, high currents were involved and the uh, 4 millimeter banana connectors that I'm using are not of uh, high quality. They were getting warm, the contact resistance kept changing so I had to keep one hand on the connectors to keep them firmly pressed in the sockets. I'm not 100% confident on these uh, measurements but I don't think they will be too far off either. It seems the efficiency ranges from 83% at 3.1 volts input up to 91.7% with 4.4 volts input and the worst case scenario from these values is of course with the lowest input at 3.1 volts the currents are very high at the input and so the losses are high. We are looking at 4.87 watts which will need to be dissipated under those circumstances. This graph needs to be considered depending on the input voltage you plan on having. If the module is going to be powered from a single lithium cell that cell needs to be able to provide up to 10 amps because you can imagine the voltage on the cell will drop down to 3.1 volts and uh, at the input of the boost module the, the current will be pretty high uh, so you would need a high current lipo pack which would probably get warm in the process of discharging that much current. 
but if your input voltage is kind of stable and you can set it around 4.4 volts then it's possible to keep things under control because of the lower current and higher efficiency. This is not just a downside of this particular uh, converter chip, this is a downside in general of uh, boost converters because they uh, reach uh, so high currents at the input if there is a, a big difference between the uh, uh, input voltage and the output voltage. So you will encounter the, the same problems with any boost converter you may choose. That was all for today, I hope I answered your questions. If you have more questions or would like to share your opinion on the subject, please do so in the comment section below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next week with a new video.